Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to The Walk. Today is Friday, May 6th, and today we are finishing up our series about letting that power of the Holy Spirit flow. I also want to remind you, since we're at the beginning of the video, there is no video tomorrow. I'll be back with you on Sunday, so let's pray. God, as we wrap up this study about letting the power of the Holy Spirit flow through us, Lord, give us the boldness and the confidence, the, the trust and the faith in you that we will be able to move forward with confidence, knowing that you've got our back, you are the one that is leading us, and we don't need to know everything that's going on. Lord, as we finish up this study, we want to remember that our purpose is to point others to you so that all of the glory goes to you and you alone. In Jesus' name, amen. So we're in Ephesians chapter 4, starting in verse 29, and this gives us a lot of information about the way we should be behaving. So we've got this, we've got the baptism of the Holy Spirit, we've got access to that supernatural power. How are we supposed to conduct ourselves? Well, let's read what it says. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs that it may benefit those who listen. So we're looking for ways we can build other people up and help them um, grow in their relationship with Christ. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. So you don't want to do anything that grieves the Holy Spirit because you're sealed with him until that day of redemption when Christ comes back. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling, and slander, along with every form of malice. So you're not looking to get even. You are going to let God work that out. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God, just as in Christ God forgave you. So just as God forgave you of so much, be aware of the fact that you're going to be expected to give, forgive others. Now, as we move to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, starting um, with verse 16, it gives us even more information about the way we're to conduct ourselves. It says, rejoice always. Walk around with that grateful heart that's rejoicing in what God has done in your life. And when you do that, you will naturally be glorifying him and telling others about what Christ has done. Pray continually. Now, some people think that that's really hard to do, but when you really break it down, if you're constantly praying and talking to God as you go through your day, it is very possible. I kind of call them popcorn prayers. It's like you pray a little sentence here and you pray another sentence there. Verse 18, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the God's will for you in Christ Jesus. So we're to rejoice always, pray continually, and give thanks in all circumstances. That's a list of three. That's pointing straight to the Trinity. And then we get to verse 19. Do not quench the spirit. That's holding the spirit back and saying, oh, it's starting to get a little scary. I don't really know. I feel like I have control. And you stop it right in its tracks. Do not quench the Holy Spirit. Do not treat prophecies with contempt, but test them all. Hold on to what is good. Reject every kind of evil. Let's break down what that's saying. It's saying when you, someone tells you a prophecy that the Holy Spirit has given them, do not treat it hatefully. You're to um, take, it into a, a, take it into account, consider it, test it against what Scripture says. If Scripture backs it up, you're going to hold on to it because it's what is good. But if it's not backed up by scripture and it goes against what the Bible teaches, then you're rejecting it as every kind of evil. But you still don't have to be nasty and ugly about it. You just say, ah, it doesn't line up with this scripture here. So I'm not going to put a lot of weight into that. So as you go into your prayer closet and you consider all these teachings that we've had this week, give yourself that gut check. Are you letting the Holy Spirit flow through you supernaturally? Are you quenching the Holy Spirit and holding back? Or are you willing to get to that point where you're going to have the prophecies, the visions, and the dreams that we talked about in Joel 2's 28 and 29? Um, as we finish up, remember, no video tomorrow. I'll be back with you on Sunday. 
Have a wonderful day. God bless and keep walking the walk.